A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> I'm here to share concerning towards inclusive OER. Uh, OER stands for Open Educational Resources. It's not working? Okay. <coughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are in the business of education. And when we talk about education, we always refer to sharing. Okay? To me, education is the same as sharing. And our knowledge, our skills, our ideas, our research uh, output, we will share, we share, okay? Now, in the digital and the internet-enabled environment of today, when we talk about sharing, we're not only sharing to a group of people face-to-face -face in our class, in our lecture theatre, but more than that, it goes out to the whole world. So, there will always be the question of copyright. So, especially, you know, among our academic, uh, there is always something holding back of wanting to share things online because of the matter of copyright. If there's an infringement, there will be legal issues. So, with this, every material that is online, ladies and gentlemen, we know they are copyrighted, even though they do not have this particular symbol. So, all rights are reserved. If you want to use any particular graphic, you want to use any particular video, you ought, we ought to get their permission first, the approval first. So, whatever that is available online uh, is copyrighted, but at the same time, there are those that are under public domain. So, which means that you can use those material without asking permission. They are freely given to you. You do not even have to cite their name, the cite the author. Now, there is something in between, and that is called Creative Commons. Okay? Uh, where still copyrighted, but there are certain conditions. You lay out certain conditions. So, to me, to us as educators, you know, we give. But when we use the CC, the Creative Commons licensing, you are giving, sharing, but you are not giving away. It still belongs to you. Okay? So, sharing, education, this is what we are doing. Huh? Of course, we can choose to get it copyrighted rather than CC. And when it's copyrighted, it means I'm not giving up to you freely. You want to use any portion of my work, you seek permission and approval from me first. Okay? And especially these days, we want to, you know, uh, someone wants to read our findings of a particular research work and we tell them, hey, you please go online and look at this particular journal. And when you go in, they probably will have to ask you to subscribe. You probably will have to pay some money. So what happened? Copyrighted. It's not shared out freely to you. Okay? So I would like to introduce you to another alternative way to share. UNESCO in 2012 have got an OER declaration. And this declaration, okay, it says this, it calls on government worldwide to openly license public, publicly funded educational materials for public use. Ladies and gentlemen, just imagine, you know, uh, all the research work that is done in the public university, who are the funders? The public. My uncle. My father. Now, they want to say, hey, can you please share concerning the outcome of that particular research work? No. If you want to, you got it all copyrighted. Okay, and probably it is already published in some journal. You have to pay to get it. So, UNESCO is arresting this. Ladies and gentlemen, we as the academic, we have been kidnapped. We do all the hard work and the publisher take it all 
copyright it, and it's, you know, you don't have the freedom to readily share it to all. So in 2012, there was the declaration, OER declaration. And you see how UNESCO is going to arrest this problem and solve this problem. It says, let us foster the awareness and the use of OER, open educational resources. Let us reinforce the development of strategies and policies on OER. Let us have policy to govern the use of OER. Promote the understanding and use of open licensing framework. I'm going to introduce this to you. Support capacity building for the sustainable development of quality learning materials. So this is OER, the definition. OER is defined as teaching, learning, and research materials in any medium digital or otherwise can be printed website in the public domain or have been released under an open license that permits no cost access use adaptation and redistribution by others with no limited restriction so it is now open okay, and licensed under something called open license a classical example of course is by MIT huh? And look at that, they have over so many, over 300 million people have uh, subscribed to their work, okay? And more than 2,000 uh, courses are made available. Look at their license, look at their license. It's a CC license. So, we are promoting this. UNESCO is aggressively promoting this. Actually, Malaysia, as a member state of UNESCO, should be aggressively promoting this. So, what is open license? Okay. So, you see, I'm talking about two words, inclusive OER. I'm touching on OER first. Huh? So, the word open, when we say open, it is not the same as the MOOC open. Massively open online courses. It's not that openness. Okay. But the open here refers to the content, the kandungan. Huh? The text, the video, the animation. Uh -huh. And it has got four symbols. Okay? So this one, open licensing, we are using is Creative Commons. Okay? And it has got four symbols. One is called BY. When you see this CCBY, it simply means you can use this material, but please remember to cite the author. Simple as that. No derivative. This particular photograph. Jangan modify. You're not allowed to even change any color there. Use it intact. Huh? Share a light. It simply means that we want to promote the use of this license. So if we use my material, make sure that you use the same license I'm using. And non-commercial. You can use my video, but don't you use my video and put it into a particular website and then you subscribe and uh, you make money out of it. No, not allowed. So out of the four symbols, out of these four symbols, okay, we can come up with this type of licenses. So, and this is called, it can be a public domain, okay, and is the most free. So it can also be a CC0. Huh? When you see a CC0, for example, you go to Pixar Bay, you go to Flickr, you can see good quality materials there, and they are CC0. Use them, and you don't even have to cite the author. But normally as academic, we do cite them. Okay. Oh, sorry. So, it can be a CCBY, okay, which means that you must attribute to the author. If you see a CCBYSA, attribute to the author, share the same uh, license. Attribute, don't use uh, for commercialization. Okay, and no commercialization at the same time, share a same license. And over here, the equal sign means no derivative. Now, so boleh bolehnya, jangan pakai ini. Because you're not allowed to remix, you're not allowed to modify. Huh? Now, the wonderful. This is very, very important. Okay, OER, to qualify as a OER, uh, it has got this particular 5R. Number one, you can retain the material. For example, the ebook, you can retain it. Okay, and keep it in your laptop and you can share it. Huh? 
you can reuse it. So you got 10,000 students like uh, Mawasan, share it out freely. You can revise them. You can remix them. You can take something from MIT, you can take something from uh, Stanford, you can take something from Wawasan, and you remix it, and you got a new material. It's yours, it's yours. But remember to cite the original. But it's your material now. No plagiarism. Okay? And you can redistribute. Then you can share it to the world again. No problem. So legally, we are able to manipulate the content. Okay? So, this is Creative common. Hmm? So, OER again, you can even uh, assemble courses from different universities, from different uh, mix of multimedia components. Okay? Now, in 2015, the United Nations General Assembly adopted the Sustainable Development Goal. And this framework is a very bold and aggressive uh, framework. It's of the people, by the people, for the people. And it is to establish a sustainable knowledge-based society. And this is where number four and number ten, quality education and reduce uh, inequality comes in. That's where OER can come in to support it. So OER plays a very important part for the realization of SDG. Okay. Again, the SDG, education calls for the international community to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all to receive pillars of access In 2017, there is the OER Action Plan, we call it the Jukjana OER Action Plan. And over here, UNESCO highlights the inclusivity in OER. So the open education resources, now they want it to be inclusive. What do you mean by inclusive? Yeah. And emphasize the mainstreaming of OER among member countries. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to know what is coming up in the horizon, it is OER. Let me tell you why. This is in 2018. There is actually the OER recommendation draft that has been drafted until today. And it will be presented this November. Look. It will be adopted in the UNESCO General Conference in November, coming up in three months' time. Okay? So in three months' time, all the government across the whole globe will be receiving some kind of a directive from the United Nations to seriously consider and implement OER into mainstream education. Now, when we say mainstream, it means formal, informal education, even right from the primary school, secondary school, they want to see OER being implemented. Now, some of the recommendation in the OER recommendation there, developing supportive policy environment. So, we know for things to move, we need some kind of a policy, okay? And this is exactly what we are doing in Malaysia. Hmm? Ensuring inclusive and equitable access to quality OER. So, again, you know, the emphasis of inclusivity. Building capacity of users to find, to reuse, to create, and to share OER. Uh, the awareness, the retraining, means OER, developing sustainable. Now, many will be saying, hey, wait a minute. For example, just now, Prof. Jorani Watiyabas was showing an e-book, an open book. And she shared the book to probably 5,000 students. Free. Now, the publisher, some publishers will be laughing away. How in the world are you going to make money? How can you get things so freely? That author choose to use CC for whatever reason. Okay? So, a new 
sustainable model needs to come out. And they are still exploring this. There are still a lot of research going on. So inclusive OER, just because content is openly available, does not mean it is accessible, accessible to everyone, especially learners with disability. Huh? Provide equitable interaction of all learners, including those with disability, universal design, to enable the inclusivity of OER. So, ladies and gentlemen, I come into, let's come into the world of learners with disability. Okay, this is the definition uh, from UNESCO. Disability refers to learners who is certified by medical practitioners of psycho or psychologists as having visual disability, hearing disability, speech, physical learning, or multiple disability. How many people do you think in Malaysia are having this problem? Almost half a million. The whole world, about one billion. Would you believe it? Big number. And usually, when they are disabled, they are sidelined in formal education. They are classified as not able. Classified as, leave them aside. So, they could be highly intelligent, high IQ, but they have been left aside. We need to be addressed. No equal opportunities for persons with disability. Often, they drop out. So, they are being denied the rights of being an integral part of the learning community. UNESCO Human Rights is calling all government to address this issue. That those who are disabled, they have the right to undergo formal general education. So we need to look into it. Lack education related facilities. Oops. Skill human resources and accessible content. Those who are blind, for example, how could they access the information? There's so plenty online. Huh? Those who are deaf of hearing, how could they access uh, what you're speaking? And so on. High cost of assistive devices and ICT tools, lack of financial support. So, we need to address this. Now, I give you two classical examples. Uh, this is Professor Ruzita from uh, Islamic International University. You probably know her. She's on wheelchair. She's small. She got polio since uh, about one year old, I think and she's on wheelchair but she got a great support since young and due to this today she is a professor huh? so she is fighting for this matter of the rights of the disabled huh? and i'm co-working with her for a particular project under unesco this is associate professor dr abdul ramantang blind since birth since birth I asked him, what do you understand by color? I don't understand. It's nothing to them. They, they can't describe color. Okay? So, hey, but he was fortunate. When he was young, the family was supportive and somehow able to lead him through formal education. And he got a lot of help. For example, you know, in the classroom, in the school, you know, in Moa, he was saying, there were volunteers who come to read to him. And then uh, in classes, you would use audio tape at that time. So there were technology coming actually to support them. Okay. Now these are among the fortunate one. Okay. Many more. 99% are sidelined. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to address this issue. Okay. Now, how could we? give equal or equitable uh, treatment to all these uh, disadvantaged people. Example, look at game. And there are these three people, okay, and all of them are treated equally because all of them got a box. Ada kotak, semua ada satu kotak. Okay? But the one that is shorter is not able to have access to the game. Okay? So, same support, okay, treated equally, but no equal access. 
treated equally, different support, because uh, this man is accommodating, okay, kind enough to give his box to this one, this advantage one. And now, with a different support, they have equal access. Now, ladies and gentlemen, could we apply this kind of principle among our content, our OER, for our students who are disabled? Another way. The fence is the barrier. Tear away the fence. And there you are, barrier removed, no support needed, equal access. Wonderful. So, what kind of a barrier, ladies and gentlemen, that we should address? As I share this, uh, those of yours who feel that, you know, we, we are all able people. We take it for granted, okay? Now, the disabled, they really need support. They need to, all the barriers to be taken down. We, the able one, need to consider, need to come up with some kind of a help. So, we need to lead them to be able to assess. So, we need to increase accessibility. We will ensure everyone that can perceive, understand, engage, navigate, interact with technology regardless of device, software, product, without any barrier. Huh? So that now, the ability or the easy to get, easy to understand, okay, easy to use. So accessibility is not about disability, it is actually about ability. About taking away the barriers so that the disabled become able. We have taken things for granted. This stage is not meant for anybody with wheelchair to come up. Okay? Uh, we, we had this experience just about a month ago. We were in the Pullman Hotel in Kuala Lumpur. And one of the keynote speaker was on wheelchair, Professor Rosita. And she couldn't come up because there were no RAM. Not even a mobile RAM. <laughs> okay? So, we are ignorant. There you are. So, an analogy. As an analogy. Okay? This is for the able. What about those who build share? At least we have the RAM. So we need to build the RAM. Coco. Even one step, they are not able to go up. Okay? So could we have a mobile RAM? So there are people who are creative enough to build this. So in terms of accessibility, for those who are having a visually impaired people, those who are having audio impaired people, mobility impact people, cognitive impact people, what can we do? How could we incorporate RAMS to support inclusive accessibility of OER? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm calling upon every one of us okay, to consider this uh, in whatever field that we are in. Okay? Kokot, how could we build RAMS so that the Able, are able to access the content that is meant for the whole for the world using uh, assistant technology how could we innovate how we create brands to realize inclusiveness in OER and another way of course is through something called universal design for learning the design that is simple, useful, accommodates a wide range of individual preferences and abilities. So, example, this is by CAST, C-A-S-T, okay? And this is the Center for Applied Special Technology. You can go there and you can get a lot of ideas people are sharing, okay? On, so, this will also go in line with what Prof. Uh, Jorani Wati Abbas was sharing concerning the need to consider okay, the ways that we present our materials, okay, there needs to be multiple modes, different modalities of presentation so that you can reach out, you can reach them. Okay. <coughs> Provide multiple lines of action and expression. Provide multiple ways of engagement. 
So this is what we mean, you know. The son was asking the question, how from her experience, vast experience, that uh, this is able, are able to engage and uh, interact among students and students, among the peers, with the lecturers, and so on. Because real learning takes place in the interaction and the activities. Okay, uh, this is for reference. The links are there. You can uh, go in and explore. Okay, so very quickly for means of different representation for the able as well as disabled. Okay, uh, by reading aloud to those who are hard of hearing, by highlighting phrases while we are talking, scaffolding, by listening to audio tape, text to speech. Uh, these days we can ask the Google to read for us. Okay, built in talking glossary, built in language translation, engagement, flexibility in use of tools to access information, keep on going uh, personal journal, use archive resources, choice in means of expression, flexible grouping strategies, go into the cast to get an in-depth, because I'm here for only 30 minutes, okay? Uh, multiple means of action and expression, okay? How could disabled express their work? Uh, you know, normal students, we expect them to write an essay, but uh, for them, would they be presenting it in other format? Written response, verbal response, visual response, dramatic response. So we, we must be open. Huh? Flexible education, uh, ways of assessment, it needs to be broadened. This is a book by UNESCO. It's called Learning for All. And you can see the universal design for learning uh, explained over here. And a lot of uh, examples on particularly how to reach out to the disabled. These books are all uh, CC. They are available online. Huh? Okay. And I'm going to end in a few more slides. Respond from Malaysia. Okay. So we have a UNESCO uh, workshop okay, on development of inclusive uh, OER policy. All right. And all the public industries are involved over here. And what we are doing is coming up with a policy called the inclusive OER policy for Malaysia. And inclusive OER, according to UNESCO, is the first time coined term by Malaysia in the world. Okay, so we are doing this in Malaysia. Among the this, the public universities were all involved, and actually among the public university, uh, for private university, I did invite Wawasan. We did invite Wawasan, but somehow there was a breakdown somehow <laughs> okay a tree as big around as you can reach start with a small seed louder a thousand miles starts with one small step it's just the beginning concerning inclusive OER ladies and gentlemen I call upon everyone who is interested to come on board in this particular community Okay? And we could, you, you could be the champion. Huh? You could be the champion in time to come. Okay. Uh, Prof. Karim was there, was also one of the speakers, and he shared something. He said, a new perspective on education, a reflection from Prof. Karim. Huh? He says, there is a new dimension of education that I can focus on and start advocating it as part of a larger initiative of making education inclusive, accessible, and available to all without exception. And he gave a lengthy uh, reflection that is available in the particular link. Okay? You can refer to it. Uh, Dr. Professor Matia, Dr. Nor Fadila binti Muhammad Sharif, uh, gave a reflection in her Facebook and she entitled it as Rise and Shine and she was saying that you know IOER, inclusive OER is an act of social justice so she was saying that she wants to respond to support this move okay? and it ends up with a slogan 
uh, given by Encik Sajali, who is the Executive Director for the Council for Federation for the Deaf. Okay? And he says that their slogan is this, nothing about us without us. Does it make sense? <laughs> nothing about us without us. Until now, I have, have a problem of comprehending it. But do Google and see what it means. Do Google and see what it means. Ladies and gentlemen, we are the able ones. They are the disabled ones. You like it or not, if we could just come in to give just 5% of our time, 5% of our effort. Soba, are you willing to share 5% of your time? Come on board. You say we know nothing about this. But we know they are in the midst of us, okay? They're intelligent, but they have been sidelined. They have not been given proper education. Why? Because their educational resources are not accessible to them. They're brilliant. Rujita, brilliant. Abdul Rahman Tang, since birth. Everything is black. But we got first class honours. First class honours, okay? And they did a sabbatical in Cambridge University just two years ago. So. They are intelligent. Let us reach out to them. If it's not me, if it's not you, who else? Prof Chen, if not you, who else? Really? Let us respond. <laughs> Let us respond. I'm making a call, ladies and gentlemen. I am making a call on behalf of UNESCO, on behalf of Commonwealth of Learning, on behalf of the Ministry of Education. Okay, who are willing to allocate a portion of your effort and time to create inclusive OER? I hope this is your response. Come in, come in, come in. Terima kasih. Thank you.